We're just about a month away from July 4th. And I have this slab of super cool lace agate that I bought at a rock and mineral show earlier this year. It has some incredible red, white, and blue. So let's celebrate America and make some themed cabochons. I promise these are going to come out great. There's plenty going on across this slab. This area up at the top is pretty cool, but it's not really red, white, and blue. You can see there's this kind of ugly mustard color mixed into it. Here in the center, there are some great blues with red interspersed. It's almost like fireworks. Although, if I'm being totally honest, it also kind of reminds me a bit of a virus under a microscope. The bottom has some really cool pink and blue laced areas, but I have a feeling that it's going to be difficult to incorporate much of the pink just because it's also close to the edge, and that edge is raw rock. So given all of that, I think our best cabochon is going to come out of the center area here. Before I take this thing to the saw, I have to figure out, where exactly do I want to cut it? This part is always a little bit nerve-wracking. I have two different goals, and they don't necessarily match up. One is getting the absolute best cabochon out of this slab that I can. But I also want to make sure that I'm not just wasting material, so I want to try and work with the whole slab and find a way to get a bunch of cabochons out of it. So I take my templates and I just kind of move them around and look for something that I like. Once I have a spot selected, it's a lot easier to decide what to do from there. I use my Sharpie, I draw on the shape that I want, and I start looking for the next spot. I think I can get something pretty interesting out of this area up here. As I'm picking out locations, one thing I'm trying to do is keep in mind that I do have to cut this thing on a saw. So I need to try and arrange them in a way that isn't going to be too complicated to move around the saw blade. It's easiest when I can cut a clear line straight through, but as long as there aren't points of different cuts coming together too close to the intended cabochons, I can usually cut a piece out. Down here with the pink, again, it's going to be a little bit tougher. I had some trouble deciding exactly where I wanted it. At first I thought, you know, this location would be best, but... I may go with this one instead. I may wind up washing the Sharpie off the bottom portion and starting over later. And now we finally get to use the saw. I don't know if I'm not patient enough or if I'm not doing a good job of lining things up the way that I should, but I feel like I always wind up with the line going just a little bit off from where I intended. I'm going to have to make sure I leave myself a little bit of extra space on the side here to redraw the cabochon, basically slide it over a little bit, because I accidentally cut into the Sharpie line. Today I'm going to go ahead and shape and polish these two. I'll set the rest to the side to work on another day. I start things off by super gluing them to these big deck screws that I got from Home Depot. It really helps with holding on to the stone and guiding them across the flat lap. So we get our flat lap out, and we always start things off with the 80 grit wheel. If you're not careful, you can eat up a lot of your stone really quickly with this one. It can be super aggressive, and you don't want to turn the speed up too high. I usually leave mine you know, somewhere between like one and three out of six. Now, I always, always, always struggle with oval shapes. I'm convinced with this one that there is a small area here up in the top right that is just much harder than the rest, and it's causing that portion to come out a little bit lopsided. I feel like I'm going to wind up spending a lot of time trying to perfect this little spot up here, and then once I do, I'm going to realize that I've gone too far and need to do the same thing on the other side, and it'll just be a mess but we'll see how it turns out. So at one point I thought I was good with the shape here and ready to move on. But if you watched the live stream of me making these, then you saw that I eventually realized I didn't make enough of a dome on the top. So there was still a big flat area in the center. I had to jump back to this plate a little bit later. You also may have picked up on the fact that I mixed up the 325 grit rubber backed pad with the 220 grit one. And I wound up wasting a lot of time before I realized the pads were in the wrong order. 
But that's okay, because eventually I got the shape I liked with a dome I like, and I made it through 220, 325, 600, 1200, and 3000 grip pads. So, are you ready to see how they turned out in the end? Aren't they just incredible? Maybe I'll go ahead and buy a torch between now and July 4th so that I can make a silver bezel setting for these and have them as pendants to wear in time to celebrate Independence Day. But that's going to have to be a different video. Until next time, bye!